this thumbnail was created entirely in Canva. It was designed with the different elements, but most interestingly, the graphics, this picture here, was generated by Canva's new beta experimental feature, text to image AI art generator. Now I just discovered that Canva has this feature and this is a big deal. I have before on this channel used Midjourney's AI generator and um, it's really good. It's been in, developed for a while and it's constantly being improved upon. However, it's behind a paywall. So in order to, you know, you can get a f some free trials, but after you run out of certain images, you have to pay for it. The difference here with Canva is I'm able to use this with a free Canva account. Now you do need to create an account, but it's free. So the question is, how does it compare to Midjourney? And what does this mean for us as creators? I'm excited. Let's jump into this and see what we can learn and see how good it is. So here's a sample, a light watercolor painting of a koi fish in a pond. This painting right here was generated by a machine using reference images created by humans. And there is some ethical concerns there. I have my response to that and I'll get to that here at the end of this video. Now let's compare it straight up to some Midjourney generated images. Here's one of the first images I created in Midjourney. It is a canning jar filled with planets and nebula. And then I added some extra adjectives in there, but I am going to, well, you know what? Let's test it. I'm gonna use all of those and see what it does. Now I know that these are, these are built differently and um, I've, I, I've already had a warning that if you include too many words on this Canva beta, it might get confused, but let's see how it handles it. Another interesting thing about Canva is that it has a GUI, a graphical user interface down here to choose the style that you want. I'm gonna stick with painting because that's kind of what the result of my original looked like. Let's generate the image and see what it does. Obviously it takes some time. There is processing behind this that requires to, what? 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 That is better than I expected. Like this is cool, but this almost doesn't look AI generated. I mean, that's up for you to decide, but, and look at here. And again, a reminder, this is absolutely free. That is cool. Photorealistic and then it's painting, painting, painting inside. This, this looks also like a real photograph. Man, I'm already blown away by the results. You, you don't even know these days. You don't even know if something is handmade or not. Okay, wow. Let's try, let's try another test. Start again. This might be an interesting one. Let's see what Canva can do. Let's just surprise me on the style. I don't know, we're experimenting, right? Generate image. I can't, I am blown away already. This is free. And the question would be then, are you licensed to use this? Now Canva, it's such a cool platform. They, as far as I understand it, even on the free plan, you can use what you create with full license to do so. Like it belongs to you, you create it. Like it gives you templates, but you got to edit it. You got to make it all your own. What are we looking at here? I mean, that's cool. It's a kingdom for sure. See, this is where you can kind of tell it's AI. When you look at the details, the details are kind of confused. Like it doesn't have full resolution when it comes to the details. If you look at it from a distance or a thumbnail, like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a thing. But once you start meticulously inspecting the details, then you're like, wait a minute, these are either a sloppy artist or a machine who is a little confused when it comes to details. And I think that'll improve with, with time. But um, like, for example, like the windows down there, you know how there's kind of, some of them are random shapes. Um, some of these lines in here, like don't really, you don't even know what they are. They're just kind of in there. I don't know, that's just my opinion. And maybe, I mean, as an artist, sometimes I do that kind of thing too. So, whoa, now that is cool. I'm not entirely sure, you know, it got creative with it. Like, I don't know what we're looking at here. Is this supposed to be like a cemetery up front and then a castle in the back? But that is cool looking. Oh, the opportunities are limitless. So I, I have used AI generated art in a Facebook and Instagram page that I have, and it's been very useful. I put like quotes on top of it, um, things like that. But now I don't need to use Midjourney. I can just use Canva. And that's kind of interesting because so far the quality is pretty comparable. You know, they're a little different and, and you can't fine tune it as much. Like in Midjourney, you can build on one concept. In Canva, it just gives you two options and you either like it or you don't, or you try again. So honestly, I mean, it's kind of sixes. Let's see if Canva can draw Pegasus better than Midjourney. Again, I'm gonna use all these detailed words and see if it can make sense of them. That can be the problem. When you have so many details, it doesn't always know what to do. So that surprised me on the style because so far I have been <laughs> impressed. Oh man. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, impressive. 
Some of the proportions are a little off, but it does have all the details. Whereas with Mid Journey, like you miss in an eye very clearly, like there's a hint of an eye, but it's not there. And the feet kind of get blurred into the tail here. And I had that same kind of problem all the time. Like, look at this, got way creative. And that was partially some of the settings I chose. So, you know, maybe I thought that's what I wanted. This one was actually pretty good, but again, the, wings, the wing is kind of in the wrong spot. Whereas I like that, you know, again, not perfect, but it's pretty good. Well, I mean, not perfect, but for a first result, I'm impressed. Okay, well, we're running into some of the same issues. Some of the details get lost in it. Honestly, I don't know if this, is this using the same technology as Midjourney? I don't know if they have shared some of their backend stuff with it. They're both Canva and Midjourney. They're both doing pretty good. Let's keep it simple. Oh, see, this was supposed to be a full body shot and it didn't understand that. So I don't want to even compare that one, but it's a cool, this was a cool result. I will copy the exact same prompt here, paste it in and surprise me. Oh, wow. That looks like it has the same, it looked at the same reference as Mid Journey. The details are, you know, interesting, but yeah, it kind of looks like the same. Huh. Again, comparable. So let's try something maybe a little bit more creative with the prompt where the AI has to do a lot of interpretation like this. What will it create if I just say, I want a pen and ink drawing of empty space. Oh, look again. It's looking at the same reference for reals. That is interesting. Okay, we gotta try one more. It's fun to do music lyrics, I tell you what. Puff, the magic dragon lived by the sea. With Mid Journey, there's lots of styles. This one was not very realistic and I, I did generate a realistic one later, but let's see what it'll do here. I can't even believe this. I, I will be using this, rest assured. The first one's done. That is interesting that it made it look like a traditional drawing. People, people do that all the time. So it was looking at a reference image where they like to do that. It's a good background for your art. Um, the details got lost. So, you know, it doesn't know what Puff the Magic Dragon looks like. You can tell it's a dragon, but it's a starting place and it's, and it's um, not, not useful. Again, that same, that's interesting. Okay. Well, there you have it. So I don't know, I'm pretty blown away. The fact that Canva has released this in its infancy, it's still beta. I know it's gonna keep getting better. I believe that this is a tool for creators. I don't think it's gonna take our jobs. I think it's gonna help us to be quicker at our jobs, finding reference images, um, creating thumbnails and or compositions, creating elements of our final piece, you know, that I think most of the case studies, the case scenario, the, 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 the times when you'll use AI art is to be part of a final project. You won't just create it with AI art and say, there, I did my work. Um, maybe I'll have it be part of my thumbnail. Maybe I'll have it be just a reference image for me to draw. Again, it's something that I use, but it doesn't, it's not very often the end result. Also, there's a question of ethics. This uh, machine, this AI was built using reference images from artists online, from people all over the world who didn't get paid for their work that has gone into this end result. Quite frankly, and this is just my opinion, I could change my mind, I could be wrong, but I am inclined to believe that all art, all artists build on other art, art artworks. And that is just the nature of art. I would almost say that nothing's truly original. You can have original aspects, but you're always building on something that you already know or you've already seen or that you're inspired by. And that's what I think good AI art will do. It won't copy somebody else's artwork. It'll take elements of it. It'll recompose it. It'll redesign it. It'll put it together in its own new way. Yes, it learned off their work, but so did you. So did I. Every artist out there learned because of other artists' work to one extent or another. So AI is just another artist who's just faster and better. Well, maybe not better, but who's faster at doing what it does. So do whoever, whatever art was fed into it, do they, do their owners of that artwork deserve to be paid for their work? You could make the case for that. I don't think it's going to happen. And I don't think it really needs to be a discussion because again, it just looked at their work. They published it online. They made it freely accessible. Then the AI looked at their freely published work, learned how to replicate it. And in the end results, it, it creates something new. And that's what we do as artists. So I think AI generated art is a really neat, interesting tool. I'm still learning and still curious about it, but um, I can see applications for it and I already have been using it. And I'm excited that Canva has it now. So it's free to use. You can use it with Canva, which this isn't sponsored, but Canva is a great tool. You can, like I said, do all sorts of things with it. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of my videos, potential AI art videos in the future, I will be do doing more of this stuff. I do all sorts of things, but you know, you might find my videos interesting. So if you do, consider commenting, thumbs up, subscribing, just to help, you know, get my stuff out there. Honestly, this is just a hobby, but if you want to, you know, help me out, I do get paid. I am monetized. And so I would appreciate your support. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you have a good one. Keep doing things that you enjoy, being creative, and as always, Remember to smile.